Guys, in the rule of threes, you have three days that you can live without water. Water is vital. It should be at the top priority of your prepping. Uh, you need to have good drinkable water. Today, we're going to take a look at getting water just out of thin air. And this is using a dehumidifier. Now, we have one out here in our garage, and we have a lot of humidity. And really, it depends on the area that you live in. If you live in a more arid area like Arizona, you're not going to get that much water. Uh, and there are areas that get more. We're here in South Carolina, and the humidity is pretty high. So we're going to take a look at the water, and there's a tank under here. We're going to pull it out, and it produces a full tank every 12 hours. Uh, we're going to measure that out and see how much it is, but this will give you at least one person enough drinking water to live. Now, that depends on you having electricity. But one caveat is that once the water goes from thin air to this reservoir, is it still safe to drink? And so we have a test kit, and we're going to check that out as well. Now, down here at the bottom, we have our reservoir. And whatever machine you have, you know, it could be different. Uh, but here, we're going to just pull this out. Once this is full, the dehumidifier will shut off automatically. And it has actually a little handle so you can grab it and pull it out. Now here we have the water. Uh, it looks like it's a gallon plus, and we're going to measure this out. We've got a couple of gallon buckets. This is a little float that turns the dehumidifier on and off. We do not keep this clean, sterile clean. Uh, if I was going to use this for water, I'd want to take this out first, give it a good cleaning. Uh, there is a little bit of residue at the bottom because we've been using this now for probably three or four years. Uh, and while I have thought about this as a water source, we never have really done anything about it. So we're going to siphon this out with this little pump. We just used this in a video about siphoning. Of course, you can use just the tube. I mean, there's a number. You can just pour it into something if you want. We have a couple of gallon jugs, and we're just going to see how much this produces. But first, if we're going to siphon it, we need to lift it up higher than our containers. Now, this has a little squeeze bottle, and you shut it off, and then you just start just pumping it, and it'll fill up the tube. Now we're going to hit the release valve. And this will just draw that water straight out. We already have one gallon filled. We're filling up the second gallon. We'll just see how much it brings in. Well, guys, we ended up with one and a half gallons, and that's over a 12-hour period. So that means we're getting about three gallons in a 24-hour period. And, guys, three people can actually live on that. It's bare minimum, but that gives you one day with three people. But if you're single by yourself, that gives you three days of water in a 24-hour period. Now, let's test it out to see if it's drinkable. Now, down in the bottom, again, we haven't been keeping this clean. So, this is going to contaminate the water somewhat because we did see a little bit of this coming into the second gallon. Uh, so, we really need to account for that. Uh, keeping this clean is going to be important if you're going to use this for a water source. All right, guys, we've got a couple of things we're going to test. We have the 16-in-1. This is to check drinking water. Uh, you can test your water. There are little strips in here. In fact, I think there are 100. Uh, pick this up off eBay just for this to test this water. But there's a lot of reasons why you want to test your water. So I highly recommend getting some kind of water test. And then we also have a bacteria test. Now, again, we didn't clean out the reservoir. We just did it as is. And some of this stuff has been sitting for a long time. So we may get some different results, but we're just going to test it out and see. All right. As far as the water test strips, uh, you can see they're just in here. There's, again, there's a hundred. And so we just pull a strip out and then you compare it right here to this little chart on the side. I mean, this is pretty cool, I think. Now we filled this up all the way to make sure we had plenty of room. And we're just gonna dip this all the way in it. Two seconds, and then we hold it out for 30 seconds. Now it has a little tab, and we can just put it up here. Of course, I've contaminated this one with my finger, so that's not good. Each of these boxes in green makes it safe. If it's not in the boxes, if it's too weak or too strong, it's gonna let you know that as well. The pH, the alkalinity is a little bit low. Uh, when it comes to the carbonate, we have it in a better zone. Hardness doesn't have a zone. It just is what it is. Cyanuric acid, we're in the green box. Copper, we're good. Mercury, we're good. Total chlorine, 
we're good. Free chlorine, bromine looks good. Nitrate, we're actually in the good and the other nitrate. Iron looks fine. Chromium looks good as well. Lead, it's still yellow. Uh, it's not in the orange. If it hits orange, it's a little bit too much. It's on the low end of the spectrum. So it looks a little darker, but it may just be the water. And then we have the fluoride, which actually looks pretty good. So overall, this is lining up just right. Now, just as a test sample, we've taken some Deer Park water and we're gonna test it as well, just to see if we get a similar reading. This is sealed. We're gonna put in our test strip. All right. Looks good, and that's good to know because I drink this water quite a bit. Looks like it's good to go. Actually, with the pH and the alkaline levels, I mean, that's definitely something that the water in the dehumidifier did not have. All right, we got a bacteria test, and this is gonna be important. Uh, this is, if it's purple, it's fine if it has spots that are beige, that means it has some, and then if it's purely beige, that's gonna mean that this is, has bacteria in it. And then we're gonna open this up, and actually this is sealed, which is good, because I'm not gonna contaminate this. Now we're gonna take two milliliters of water, and I just happen to have one of these syringes here to be able to tell. So here we're gonna put the syringe in, and we're just gonna pull out two milliliters of water. Now we've got a lot more than that, so we're gonna go back down. And so here we go. And then we just squeeze the water in. Now you can see we wanna cover the bag so you can squeeze it and get that water all over that bag or, or the test strip. And then we're gonna seal this up. Now it takes between 24 and 48 hours. It says 24 to 27 Celsius, so I'll, I'll look at that, but I'm sure that's it, just room temperature. So we'll find out the results. All right, guys, we've let this sit for about 30 hours. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. I'm really curious as well to see. Again, we did not clean that reservoir, so that could be a possibility. And I can see right now, this has a lot of bacteria in it. Uh, one thing is, if it's purple, it's fine. If it has spots of yellow, it has bacteria. If it is completely colored, this thing is full of bacteria. So it's good to know not to drink this water unless you treat it. Now you can treat it with Clorox, you could boil it. I mean, there's a number of things you can do to filter that water out. But uh, I think keeping the reservoir really clean if you're gonna use it for drinking water is going to be vital. And guys, you just never know what you're gonna find out unless you do your research. We cleaned out the reservoir and we used bleach and really got it down to as clean as possible. Uh, I did bring it over in this cup, uh, and we're going to test it out. Now, I can't use the syringe because it has been contaminated with the bacteria, even though it sits for a good while. So we're just going to open up this new one, and we're going to do our best to simulate it. We only need two milliliters of water, and again, this has to set for at least 24 hours. Oh, that was way more than I needed. Pour some of that out. All right, we're gonna close it up. This is gonna give us the test. Just wanna make sure it covers all the test paper. We wanna keep it in purple, so we're just hoping for the best. Well guys, the first test sample, here it is, uh, and it was bacteria filled. And so we cleaned the reservoir, we used bleach, and we cleaned it as much as we could. Uh, it's very difficult to get your hands down into the cleaner and uh, into the reservoir. So we're going to see how this pans out. I am very curious. Well, there we go. Purple. I mean, all together. Man, that makes me feel a lot better. With that water being set in there, in fact, my wife had told me she'd put lemons in there to help uh, sanitize and so probably after months of that residue being in the bottom, that probably attributed to the bacteria. But here, we've got good and purple. I mean, it looks great. There's no spots of beige anywhere. And so I'm very pleased with that. So if you're gonna use this as a water source, make sure that you keep that reservoir clean. So guys, having a dehumidifier, it can actually bring water out of the air and into a reservoir. 
And so this is just an idea for prepping. You know, it may not be able to suit all your needs, but it definitely can give you a little extra. And if you test it and it doesn't come out drinkable, this could be used to flush toilets. It could be used to water your plants. I mean, there's a number of things that you can do with water just because you can't drink it, even cleaning. Just another idea of prepping and one that I've really been wanting to hit on for a while. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. We got water everywhere. <laughs> um. Huh? Unless it's a timer. I don't want it to be a timer. There's the power. Okay, if we're going to do that, let's unplug it and we'll put. Mr. Dodger.